Okay, today I'm going to prove possibly the most important theorem in all of mathematics, which states that each number has a unique prime factorization. Of course, we're talking about natural numbers here. Now, to prove this, I'm going to start with a lemma. Okay, so my lemma is that um, if p is a, a prime number such that um, p divides a b, then p divides a or p divides b. All right, and this lemma I believe is due to Euclid. So let's prove this. Okay, so suppose p is, divides a b and p does not divide a, all right? Then, um, then the GCD of p and a has to be one because the only divisors of p are one in itself and if the GCD of p and a were p, then p would divide a. So thus the GCD of p and a is one. And so we can write um, p and a and we can, we can find a solution to the equation k p plus l a is equal to one where k and l are integers, All right? And this is a very important kind of algorithm um, that, that you learn in in basic introductory number theory class is that, you know, there are, you can always find integer solutions to the equations m a plus n b is equal to g c d of a b. Okay, and I believe it's like Euclid's algorithm for finding these integer solutions. Okay, so now um, we know that there's a solution k p plus l a is equal to one. All right, now how do we leverage this to our advantage okay so since p divides a b let's multiply both sides of this equation by by b okay so k p b plus l a b is equal to b but now we know that p divides p divides this term clearly because it's just staring us in the face, it's one of the factors, but also p divides this equation because p, p divides, sorry, this term in the equation. So p divides a b by assumption. Since p divides a b by assumption, we know that p divides k p b plus l a b, basically the entire left-hand side of this equation. Um, and so therefore we conclude that p divides b. All right, so that proves the lemma. Now, let's go into the proof itself, okay? So, the proof itself. So, it's basically using strong induction. Okay, so one has a prime factorization, I guess. You could just say it's, it's kind of like a null prime factorization, it's just one. And then two has a prime factorization, which is also itself because two is prime. Now, so that's the base case is that I guess um, one and two have prime factorizations if you want to include one in the list. Now, assume that we have some list one, two, three, all the way to n of numbers which have prime factorizations. Okay, then um, n plus one is either prime. So if it's prime, then it, it's its own prime factorization or um, n plus one is not prime, in which case it's equal to a, b, where a, b are non-trivial factors. And um, since, since, a is less than n plus one, b is less than n plus one, we conclude that um, a and b have prime 
factorizations by our assumption. We assumed that everything from 1 to n had a prime factorization, namely we've already assumed that a and b have prime factorizations. And therefore, um, n plus 1 is simply equal to the product of the prime factorization of a times the prime factorization of b. Okay, And this is a prime factorization of n plus 1. So in either case, if n plus 1 is composite or prime, we've like physically constructed a prime factorization. And so this proves, um, this proves existence of the prime factorization by um, strong induction. Now, if you want to think about the logic of this argument, basically what we're saying is that if, I, if you give me a number, I can either, it's either prime or I'm going to keep breaking it down in a finite number of steps until it's built from prime building blocks, okay? And since those factors are bounded below by one, it'll only take me a finite number of steps and it'll eventually result, end up with all primes in the factorization, okay? All right, now let's show uniqueness, okay? So this is where the lemma is gonna come into play. So suppose that I have n is equal to p1 k1 u2 k2 da 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 p n k n well my notation is bad here actually let me use i guess m instead of n and then let's suppose that there's a different prime factorization q1 to the l1 q2 to the l2 q k to the lk Oh my gosh, my <laughs> running out of indices here. It's a common problem, I guess, for number theorists is not enough letters. Um, let's just call it C. I don't, I don't know, for the sake of time. So we have two different prime factorizations. Here's prime factorization one, and here's prime factorization two. And we're trying to show that they're equivalent, okay? So, um, so we know that, okay, so take, take P1, um, which divides N, okay? And in particular, P1 divides this other prime factorization, okay? So P1 has to divide Q1, L1, dot, 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 Q, C, L, C. All right, but by the lemma, since P divides, um, the prime number divides this bunch of factors, it has to divide one of the factors. So P1 divides Q I for sum I, okay? And um, since P1 is prime and Q I is prime, that means that um, P, P1 is equal to Q I for sum I, because they're both primes. So that's the only possibility if one divides the other. Okay, well we can do this as long as we want. Now, now all I need to do is just maybe, you know, I've identified that there's a P1 in here somewhere. So I'll just divide out the P1s on both sides and then repeat this process and keep eliminating all, everything on the left-hand side of this equation. So I can eliminate every one of these primes and take them out from here as well. And I have to be, I have to be left with one at the end of the day. I can't be left with any, you know, some other prime factor, you know, maybe Q star that's not not in here, because at the end of the day, I would have divided out everything, be left with one on this side. And so I have to be, by, the, by this equality sign, I have to be left with one here. And so I'm completely exhausting all the prime factors in, in doing this, in doing this process iteratively by applying this lemma over and over again. I'm going to exhaust everything and I have to be left, I have to take out all the factors on both sides. I can't be left with any, you know, um, deviant factors on the right hand side because then we wouldn't have equality because I can keep dividing out everything okay so hopefully this made sense and um, and if it didn't then I encourage you to really you know read some more search on YouTube or go on a textbook or find more resources for this proof because it's really important that you understand how this works and also feel free to um, ask any questions in the comments if you feel necessary have a good night